There's nothing like experiencing music live and in person. But at this moment, stages are dark as the COVID-19 pandemic threatens the very existence of live music venues. On Destination Live Music Comeback Road, we're going inside some of West Michigan's favorite music spots to discover their rich histories, take a look behind the scenes, hear how the pandemic is affecting them, and how you, the fans, can show your support. Join us on the path to Destination Live Music Comeback Road, West Michigan. Nine years of blood, sweat, and tears literally into this venue trying to make it work. And one of the things, you know, people would say, well, it's in Spring Lake. How good can it be? I'm Michelle Hanks. I'm the talent buyer for Seven Steps Up and one of the owners. I'm Gary Hanks, her husband and co-owner, I believe. <laughs> Mainly we do reserve seating, 132 seat listening room. We have amazing acoustics in the room and so we ask people to be quiet. It really creates a magical experience for the artist and for the audience. It was uh, originally a Masonic temple. They opened on New Year's Eve, 1918, and they actually had a concert. So here we are 100 years later, still doing music. It was over a year before we actually bought the building. It might have been close to two years. It was another year and a half before we moved in. We live upstairs. Gary came up with the idea to have a, an event venue. We'll get a liquor license and we'll turn it into a venue. So that's how it started. So we said, let's do a concert. Maybe we can sell some alcohol. If it works, we can do two or three of these a year and we were hooked. We've now done 500 and something. At the moment that the music started, my husband and I looked at each other and nodded our heads. Because head we realized at that moment we had something special in this room because you could just feel it. People would ask us what we were and we were like, uh, we don't know, we're a music venue. So we didn't even know what a listening room was, but it's where people go and listen to music. The expectation is that people will sit and listen as opposed to, you know, sitting at the bar chatting with your friends. We say we ask people not to talk <laughs> while the true. artist is on the mic, but the truth is we demand it because you can whisper at one end of this room and everybody can hear throughout the room. By and large, these are people that are coming in to listen to music and that are open-minded that maybe have never heard the artist. They might not even have heard the artist until they walk in here and they say, we don't have to because we know you've already taken care of that. It's really just listening to them perform and whether it's a band or an individual artist, just looking for those ones that make me lean in just a little bit to, to what I'm hearing. The artists that play at Seven Steps Up, it, it's, it's, it's really all over the place from you know, bluegrass to rock and roll and everything in between. Seth Gleer, Tony Luca, Albert Lee and, and Peter Asher, Liz Longley, The Contenders, Nobody's Girl. It was a big thing to try to get people to understand. It's not the location, it's the space that makes such a difference and the energy and the crowds. As we were entering into March, we were more than optimistic. We had, at that point, it was over 60 shows on the books and with a lot of dates held and then COVID hit. We were already seeing things start to crumble and knew that we were heading into unknown territory. So that, that all happened very, very quickly. It's hard when your business suddenly goes from its record-breaking projected year to no income. At that particular point, we had no idea what was going to happen. So the shutdown in Michigan started within days, and we laid off all of our employees. The other thing that happened quickly, probably in April, was NEVA formed, the National Independent Venue Association. 
I think it's been really surprising how fast they've put together a lot of strategies to try to help venues, lobbying efforts on the national and state levels, fundraising, and just emotional support. I think everyone was very surprised at the amount of noise that, that, li that people that, who love live music were able to make, and it was all kind of coordinated through Neva. We found ourselves in a very precarious position uh, financially, and we really didn't know what we were going to do. And we were contacted by someone in our local community who said, we want you to start a GoFundMe. We said no. Uh, that just doesn't, we don't feel comfortable with that. That doesn't feel good to us. We've always figured this out before. We'll do it again. We're an independent venue. We're independent, <laughs> damn it, you know. We can do this. Well, if you guys don't want to do it, then we'll start it for you, which felt even more awkward to us. I was sitting at the table. We had gone back and forth over what it's going to say. And I said, okay, I'm hitting send. The next morning we woke up. There was already thousands we of We already dollars had thousands there. of dollars and, and responses and people saying, what can we do and how can we do this? How can we, what do you guys need? And, and we were completely taken aback. That was our six months of, you know, six months of operating. Last week we were notified that we are the recipient of a grant through the Live Music Society and that is going to help us get some equipment. We now have Seven Steps Up merch. We uh, have the GoFundMe. We've done some live streams where people can donate. That's how we managed thus far. Facebook is a great place. We are very active on Facebook, somewhat active on Instagram. But our email list, you can sign up right from our right from the website on the homepage. Seven steps up. Seven steps up .com. If you love live music, look around, look at your favorite venue, and um, reach out, do something. I think Seven Steps Up will have an opportunity to do some shows, perhaps with, well, the expectation is with live streaming. One of the things that we did is we created a new pop-up on our uh, website where we could put wording in of whatever it is that we feel that we need to put in so that people have to say okay before they come in, whether that may be... I agree to wear a mask. For I'll, I'm going to get my temperature taken. Yeah. We tried to, to create that so that whenever the time comes and we're selling tickets that we can be very clear with people what we expect of them before they come in the door. I think that there's going to be a, a renewed sense of community, not, not just around music, but certainly music is going to be, I think, the most powerful way that will bring communities and individuals back together. If, if you had asked me six months ago what, happened, what, what would happen if you were to have a pandemic hit, I would have said we, we'd be ruined. We would be ruined. Well, turns out we're not. Turns out, <laughs> turns out we're gonna be okay. I mean, because of our amazing fans, because our amazing artists, because of the people that support us, our community that supports us, both financially and emotionally, you know, we're gonna be okay. I'll be your 